so quirky and funny. <laughs> Not really. Not when we're talking about lens characteristics. No. No. Wow. This really is a finicky lens to use. For the first time in nearly like three years, we're actually gonna be talking about some camera stuff on the channel, but not the actual camera this lens goes to because that's gonna take a much longer time to evaluate and we're gonna get there. So let's talk about it. Today, we're gonna be looking at the Fujifilm 16 to 80 F4 lens. Before we get to it though, let's talk about some channel business. In an unsurprising landslide, in a four to two vote, by the way, Best serve cold, one, so you know what that means. Get ready for some drama! Eh, we're gonna make that sometime soon. Um, if estimated date, I'm just gonna, somewhere, probably like right there. That's a, approximately when I think we're gonna make that. And also, also, at the time of filming this video, we are very close to hitting our goal of 500 subscribers by the end of the year. The number is gonna be right around here, because who knows, it might change while I'm editing this video. And we are so close. All right, I, I will find one final push, and we will get there, and you'll see us suffer at the hands, the greasy red hands of the Blazing Wing Challenge. Anyway, let's get back to some TikTok. Well, more specifically camera talk, but who cares about semantics, right? Anyway, this lens is certainly uh, interesting, but before I bash the ever-loving life out of it, let's talk about some of the good stuff. All right, first, we're gonna start with the build quality because it is like top-notch fantastic. You've got a pretty much, you've got a mostly metal body with plastic accents, but they're not cheap plastic. Like this whole thing feels weighty and sturdy in hand, not to say heavy because frankly this thing is, I'm not gonna throw it because no, no. But it's not heavy, it's just weighty and sturdy. The zoom ring is well dampened. It's got a nice rubber ring on it. The focus ring also well dampened. The aperture ring though, it's nice and clicky as you can hear that right there. Nice and clicky, but Honestly, it feel it not even it feels like the aperture ring straight up does move way too easily because there have been many times where I'm holding the camera and in my hand and the aperture ring turns just slightly from f4 to like f4.5 or something and then messes up my shot just a teensy bit and I don't know maybe it's just because the way I hold it but honestly I should not really have to worry about something about something like that especially for a lens that is um what what. What's that price tag? For that much money, absolutely not. And you know what contributes to that price? The weather ceiling, which is pretty awesome because you can take it into harsher environments and not have to worry. It's pretty, I'm like pretty sure it's dust proof, splash proof, rain proof, everything right here proof. That's pretty good. All right, let's talk about something else on this lens that's Good, the range. So, like I said, it's 16 to 80, which in APS-C terms, 1.5 times crop, makes for a 24 to 120 lens at f6, which is awesome, because you can go from pretty wide to moderately tight, which, I mean, like, for photo and video, you have, you're pretty covered, which is nice, and, the only nitpick that I have with this is the f-stop because it could be better than f4 but then that would make it much more like heavier and that would, yeah, it would get into really heavy and not weighty and then more I'm betting more expensive than the already beast tier 16 to 55 f2.8 and I can't tell you how handy it is to have such a wide range especially when we like vlog so I can just be like Oh yeah, vlogging in hand, and then, oh, what's that? Boom, zoom off to something in the distance. That's really handy. So honestly, right, you know what? No, let's, let's, let's backtrack. The range is great, not good. So that's two things about this lens that, frankly, fantastic. Good job, Fuji. Alrighty, now we're gonna move on to something about this lens that's mm, good, not great. The image quality. From what I've observed using this lens, the optics are reasonably sharp, but not, not anything mind-blowing like a Sigma lens. And it would be nice if they made something from the X mount, but whatever. I haven't noticed any of my photos coming out soft, unless they were out of focus, which is something. 
that we will get to. But I just feel like there's something with this lens missing in the sharpness department. Unlike that beautiful 16-55 f2.8. Oh, right, that price tag. Although, I gotta say, I have noticed a slight mm, softness in the corners of images, specifically. But realistically, that's not a deal breaker because let's let's be real here. Are you looking at the corners of the picture? Because if you are, clearly that picture sucks. But I'm, I'm, we're just being real here. And in video, it doesn't really come into play because you're shooting in either 17 by 9 or 16 by 9, in which case the corners affected aren't actually in the image, so not bad. And color rendition with the lens is quite nice, so I'm not being a fool and jacking my white balance. Yeah. User error. We love to see it. And oh yeah, this lens actually has optical stabilization built right in, which is solid. When I walk around and vlog, I don't experience that warply wobbly nonsense you might, that you might see on lenses wider than this, like that god awful 10 to 24. Yikes. But at the same time, I don't get the smoothest of footage either, which isn't to say that this lens is bad for stabilization. Because on a recent shoot that I did, this lens in conjunction with IS Boost on the X-T4 did an outstanding job of keeping the sta footage stable when I know that my hands were shaky and I couldn't exactly keep it straight because I was hand holding. But hey, it did a great job. And as I was doing that and way over at the topping, there was footage to show you just how good that was. And for you photo people, in my use case and testing, I found that the stabilization in conjunction with the internal stabilization is pretty effective all the way down to one tenth and if you try a little bit harder one eighth shutter which is good so yeah you know what optical stabilization you were good too and you know what that's i'm glad you got that in because things are about to get ugly all right let's talk about something on this lens that is not so great the autofocus you know, with this camera and lens, I was really excited to finally have a lens and camera setup that could actually autofocus competently, as the Pocket 4K essentially does not have autofocus. Let's let's just, let's, any Pocket 4K users out there, you know, it doesn't have it. And the GH4, as late and great as it was, had some of the worst autofocus in the business. So I could literally only go up from there, right? You would think, but this lens, it's okay. I played that up like it was like really painfully bad, but it's just painfully inconsistent, which essentially is just as bad. Like for photo, if, if you're getting this lens for photo, it is as good as you need it to be. I had an almost perfect hit rate. And honestly, whenever it wasn't right, I felt like it was user error on my part. So take that what you will, your use case may vary. If if you can dial in these autofocus settings on this camera correctly, because boy oh boy are those a mess. Ah, anyway, I digress. Note that I said for photo, because when you get to video, like 95% of the time, it, it works. It works just fine. But then that other 5% of the time where it doesn't work, it doesn't work hard, like bad very very bad like this lens will just like be on something and then lose focus lose it all together and it is a miracle if it gets it back which i'm rolling a clip right now so you can see just how badly it killed this clip like we're rolling and then it just lost that focus and i couldn't believe it and i was not happy about it frankly that inconsistency is bad because i want to be able to trust my lens but also, it could, who knows? On a different camera, this lens could be fantastic because at least on the X-T4, this camera already alone has some weird like autofocus quirks, but then they're all accentuated even worse with this lens. And then what's more is that at the long end, like I'd say 60 to 80 range, it's just inconsistent. As in the clips I just rolled and I'll roll them again, I was at the 60 to 80 range and it was just falling apart and I don't know, I just, I was not a fan. Okay, 
We've talked about the good. We've talked about the bad. Now let's talk about the straight up unacceptable. Something I've noticed about this lens in my use and testing of it is just this insane exposure stepping when you're zooming through the range. Take, look at that. That is unacceptable. Like I, I, Fuji, how did you let this happen? This is nothing in comparison to what the lens used to do. And I will leave a link to in the description to a review that actually highlights this because I haven't had it happen and we'll get to why. But there was, there used to be this insane focus wobble as you zoom through the range in addition to the exposure stepping, Fuji, why? And I don't know, I just, it's really, really bad. Bad, bad. Thankfully though, over time, Fuji has fixed this, most of this, with firmware updates. But you know what the sucky part about all of this is? This lens is nearly two, three years old, and these problems are still here. And you know what that means? It means that these problems are nine out of 10 gonna be in this lens's lifetime forever. They're probably done putting firmware updates into this lens, which means like anybody else who gets this lens is still stuck with these horrid problems. Fuji, come on, hit us with the Kaizen updates. What happened? Oh, and then there's also this like really weird quirk. I've never seen it on any other lens ever. And it's when you zoom all the way from 80 out to 16, you get this weird warbly nonsense in the corners. I've tried to look up what this is and maybe I just haven't researched hard enough, but it is so ugly and weird and distracting. Like, I'm, I will show you a few examples of this happening and you're gonna see it and you're gonna be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I don't know how that happened. I've tried it with image stabilization turned off, but you can't turn off image stabilization in the lens, which I mean, I would like the option. I wouldn't turn it off, but I would like the option. Come on, Fuji. $800, $800, $800. And uh, it's, it's, it's an awkward quirk. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. With all those things in mind, what do we have before us? Honestly, I gotta say a pretty middling lens. If you are primarily focused on photography and you happen to dabble in video, honestly, by all means, get this lens. There's no reason you shouldn't get this lens if you are photo focused. But if you are video focused on the Fuji system, first off, what are you doing? Stop, get some help. But if you're really video, if you are serious about video on the Fuji X-T4, skip this lens. Get the 18 to 55 kit lens, which is just not a kit lens. It's awesome, and it does it does so much. The only thing about that lens that's bad is that it has a variable aperture, 2.8 to 4, which is okay, but variable aperture still sucks. Although, if you can, save up for that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful 16 to 55 f2.8. What a beauty. All right, everyone, I hope that this review was insightful in your search for the right lens for the Fuji system. And before you go, I wanna say, if you haven't checked out our previous film, click the card right around here and check it out. It is far and away one of the best films that we have made to this day, and I would appreciate it. The team would appreciate it if you gave it a watch. Ah, and that officially does it for us today. And tune in next week, that's right, next week, for our first movie review. And what might we be reviewing, you might ask? Oh no!